Ninurta is the Sumerian and Akkadian hero god of war. Hunting and the South Wind, also known as Ninjirsu, Pobblesog, and the biblical Nimrod. He originally appears in Sumerian writings in the early 3rd millennium BCE as an agricultural god and local deity of the Sumerian towns of Jirsu as Ninjirsu and Larak as Pobblesog. His function as a deity of agriculture shifted as Mesopotamia's cities became more military and initiated conquering campaigns against one another. So, in today's video, we are going to be talking on Ninurta, the Mesopotamian war god. Ninurta was the son of Enlil and Nirhursag, or Enlil and Ninlil in various accounts. Gula, the goddess of healing, was his wife, but he was married to the goddess Bao in earlier inscriptions as Ninjirsu, also known as Baba. He was regularly invoked in magical spells to fend off danger, demons, and disease, despite his aggressive temperament. He was also connected with healing and protection, thus his association with Gula, and was often involved in magical rituals to ward off danger, demons, and disease. He is most frequently depicted as a warrior with upraised wings, a bow and arrow, and his legendary mace Sharur, a weapon capable of speech and reason. He stands or runs on the back of a scorpion-tailed lion beast in Babylonian art. He was still associated with agriculture, growth, and the harvest as late as circa 1500 BCE, represented as a fully realized individual capable of great feats, yet flawed like any mortal. Ashur Nasserpal II, 884 to 859 BCE, erected a huge temple and ziggurat to Ninurta at Ashur Nasserpal II's new city of Kalu, and the Assyrian and Neo Assyrian empires welcomed him as the son of their deity Ashur. Seals from the period depict Asur as a winged disc with Ninurta's name beneath it, implying that the two were almost equals. Between circa 3300 and 612 BCE, when the Neo-Assyrian Empire succumbed to invaders, Ninurta was invoked by a number of kingdoms and principalities in ancient Mesopotamia, whether for protection or military assistance. However, early in his career, he was portrayed as the polar antithesis of a war god. Ninjirsu, Lord of Jirsu, was the god's original name in Sumer, and the earliest scriptures use this name for the son of Enlil and Ninlil, although one myth suggests he's the son of Enlil and a she-goat. Gudea of Lagash, circa 2144 to 2124 BCE, known for his piety and dedication to the gods, committed himself to Ninjirsu, and his successor, Ur Ninjirsu, would honor him by taking the god's name. Gudea is most known for the Gudea Cylinders, a pair of terracotta cylinders, about 2125 BCE, that describe his dream in the building of Ninjirsu's temple, the longest Sumerian book ever unearthed. By the second millennium BCE, Ninjirsu had already established himself as a battle deity, as evidenced by his appearance in the Babylonian book, the Epic of Anzu. During the first millennium BCE, Ninjirsu's name was changed to Ninurta, and the narrative was rewritten. By circa 2600 BCE, the god was already recognized by this latter name, whose meaning is uncertain, and while Ninjirsu was still mentioned in Sumer, Ninurta was the name most Mesopotamians knew and used. Ninurta remained associated with agriculture despite his status as a powerful warrior god, a champion of the gods, and defender of humans. The Sumerians are well known for their technological advancements, which were particularly useful in the early stages of agriculture. This manual, the world's earliest farmer's almanac, dates from between 1700 and 1500 BCE, and begins with the statement, quote, In days of yore, a farmer trained his son. Almost like a fairy tale, before moving on to practical advice on how to get the most out of the land. The article goes into great detail about how to prepare the soil, plant the seed, even drive away birds, and harvest the produce properly. Although it appears that this guidance is being delivered by a father to his son throughout the 35 lines of writing, the tablet concludes, Ninurta, Enlil's son, has given these teachings. Your praise is well deserved, Ninurta, Enlil's dependable farmer. The farmer's instructions to his son were thus granted divine sanction. Ninurta's power and status in the Mesopotamian pantheon would have given text credited to him great weight, especially since he would have had to take time away from heroic deeds to offer his advice. 
Ninurta's tales are similar to those of the Babylonian deity Marduk and the later Greek hero Heracles, Roman Hercules, in that he prevails over the forces of chaos and restores order like Marduk, but his hubris, like Hercules's, can get the better of him at times. The Anzu bird had stolen the Tablets of Destiny from Enlil in the Epic of Anzu, also known as the Defeat of Zu. These tablets contain the fates of gods and mortals, as well as the legitimacy of whoever wields them. The Anzu bird, a supernatural creature of tremendous size, waits for the opportunity to steal the tablets. And one day, when Enlil is washing his face, the bird swoops in and steals them. He takes off, while Enlil seeks assistance from the other gods. Ninurta is the only one who steps forward to chase the Anzu. The Tablets of Destiny, on the other hand, have the ability to turn back time. So when Ninurta shoots his arrows at the bird, they disintegrate in midair and revert to their original components. The shafts to the cane break, the feathers to birds, and the tip to the quarry. Ninurta's bow, like the bowstring, may be traced back to the woods. The Anzu drives Ninurta back, but he summons the south wind, which shreds the bird's wings off and drops him to the ground. Ninurta then slashes the Anzu's throat and returns to Enlil with the Tablets of Destiny. In the poem Lugale, also known as the Exploits of Ninurta, the hero must confront Asag, also known as Agag, a demon of sickness and disease who dwells in the underworld. This struggle is started by Ninurta's mace, Sharur, who urges him to fight the demon by complimenting Ninurta's strength, courage, and skill, as well as informing him how easy it will be to vanquish the enemy. Ninurta travels to battle with Asak, but the demon isn't alone. He's gathered an army of rock monsters and rebellious plants to pursue the hero. Ninurta is terrified. The text says he flees like a bird, but Sharur encourages him to turn around and face his foes, reminding him of his former glories and the immense fame he will achieve if he succeeds. Ninurta uses his mace, huge bow, and other weapons in his belt to defeat Asag and his army. Asag and his followers, on the other hand, kept the underworld's primordial waters in control, and their deaths caused the brackish waters to rise and flood the land. Nothing can grow, since there isn't enough fresh water to sustain the crops. Ninurta gathered his enemy's bodies and built a wall around the land, then stacked them higher into a mountain to keep the underworld's waters at bay, and finally elevated the River Tigris to irrigate the area. What do you think of this video? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, then like, share, and comment, and press the bell icon for the latest updates.